We got in around, I think it was January 30th. Every, all the thousands of other applicants are doing. I'd rather apply with my normal mm. grades okay. or my e grades. In grade 11, I got around a 90. Hey guys, it's Han. So I'm a second year biomedical engineering student at UBC and today I'm going to be spilling the tea as part of episode two of my university series where I basically talk everything college university. I'll be talking about my extracurriculars, my grades, everyone asks me about my grades, and other advice for your written application and things that you can do to prepare in advance. And my friend who did IB in high school is also gonna come on at the end. I'll have the timestamps um, on the screen, like when you scroll, and she's just going to kind of give an IB perspective. So the first tip is to obviously in advance go and look at all of the dates for the application. So UBC does have an early admissions period. So I did early admissions and so did a lot of my friends, and I suggest that you do too, and that is around December, I believe that it's due. Another thing is um, if you do not get accepted in the early admission round, but you did early admissions, then your application gets like put back into the normal pile and they'll reassess it and you can get um, a normal admission that happens to lots of people. So it's kind of nice because you almost get looked at like twice, you kind of have two chances. So my friend and I both did early admissions and we got in around, I think it was January 30th was the exact day. So we only really waited like one or two months to get accepted and it was very, very early. And yeah, it was just great because you have that security. So this leads me to my next piece of advice. So at UBC, um, for early admission specifically, they only look at your grade 11 grades because at least at the high school I went to, we didn't have any grade 12 grades. So this obviously depends on what country you live in, what school you go to, blah, blah, blah. And they also look at grade 11 if you do normal admission. So they look at both grade 11 and grade 12. It's just weighted a little heavier if you do early admissions. So my tip is to really start aiming for those high grades in grade 11 and not just wait for grade 12 because they do matter. Okay, so this is something everyone always asks me and I feel weird talking about it because grades really depend on like what country you live in, what school you go to. So in grade 11, I got around a 96 or 97 average and then in grade 12, I had around a 98 average and I did not take any AP courses. I did take AP English and got took the exam, I got a four, so I have credits for that for high school. Six credits for my humanities and my English. Um, and then I took calculus, um, physics, chemistry, biology, um, and then like all of the normal ones. And I was also in French immersion, so I had to take French in grade 11 and 12, but I wasn't like one of those people who was in like AP math, AP physics, AP bio. So yeah, those are my grades. I also wanna put a little disclaimer. Vancouver is extremely grade inflated, so like I talked to people who are in my program in engineering who came from India and had like an 80 average and that's just like normal there. So UBC does take that into account. And just one more side note on grades for people going into engineering. I went to an event um, in grade 12 and they said um, the average grade is around a 96%. So take that information as you will. So as I said, UBC does not just look at grades. There's also a personal profile. And I believe if I'm not incorrect, it's around like a 50-50 kind of, like they're equally as important. Grades might be a little more important, but I believe they're almost equal. Another thing like disclaimer, this is all just my opinion. So I would recommend doing long-term extracurriculars rather than like short-term extracurriculars. So basically they wanna see that you're pursuing things you're passionate about and it's not just like grade 12 and you're like, oh, I have a personal profile and you need to like do all these random things that I'm kind of like half-assing, you know what I mean? They want to see that you're passionate and pursuing it long-term because that essentially leads to the most development in whatever position or hobby you're doing. So my next piece of advice is it's great if extracurriculars are all connected in some way. So for me, I was science fair president, peer, I peer tutored, and I was also a dance teacher assistant at my dance center. So maybe you can tell, but a similar um, thing with all of those things is I love leadership and I love helping others. So that's just like fun for me, that's what I enjoy. And so that's what I pursued. And it's great because 
when I talk about it with a specific personal profile prompt, when I talk about like, you know, what are you passionate about? I talk about leadership and helping others and I can just boom, 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 list those three things like all in one. So my next piece of advice is very important. And that is to not put on your personal profile what you think they want to hear because that's what every, all the thousands of other applicants are doing. And it, it comes across like that. Like you can tell when something is not genuine and it's a little bit try hard. So you really want to be unique in your application and don't get caught up in like, oh, but that's not what they're looking for because you don't know what they're looking for. And if you're a good writer, you can show them and tell them what they're looking for. They might not even know that they wanted someone who was a professional knitter. You know what I mean? You need to prove that to them and show that to them. So this kind of piggybacks on what I was saying about um, your extracurriculars being similar. That will happen naturally if you are pursuing what you're interested in and what you're passionate about. So for example, if a prompt asks what's important to you and why, maybe don't be like, oh, academic success. Obviously if that's truthfully like really what gets you hyped, do it. But you know, try to talk about, you've probably talked about those academic extracurriculars and hobbies already. So this is a chance um, to really talk about something that will set you apart from other people. So for me, I talked about how I really value being in nature and I love the outdoors and backpacking. So that's, you know, not a typical answer and probably not a lot of people wrote that. And they're getting to know me for like, they look at the application and they're kind of seeing a unique person instead of just a number. So now you're probably asking, okay, well, I have a unique thing that I really do like. I didn't think I should have put it, but now I'm starting to think maybe I should. How do I put that into words that it's transferable? And how do I even figure out that it's transferable? So really sit down and think, okay, like I love to knit. Okay, what have I gained from that? Like what skills? Okay, like, you know, I'm self-disciplined. I take, I schedule time out of my day to do what I love and I am able to work around it. I can take that to managing my engineering course load. And then when you go to write your personal profile, this is a huge tip, do not write empty statements and tell a story. Really wanna try not to get caught up in, in like explaining what you do. Like I knit for seven hours every day. I knit a scarf, I knit, cause yes, that is something they don't care about. Like you wanna try to follow the STAR method, which is situation, task, action, and result. Example is for my backpacking, I basically told the story about a time we were all backpacking and it was starting to like downpour rain one day and everyone was like defeated and we didn't wanna keep going and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, you know what? Let's all do like a one minute meditation. And I led a meditation and we were all calm. And you know, I was like, you know, let's not focus on the rain, focus about how happy we'll be when we're at the base camp thing. And it ended up being like a great time. I'm able to stay calm in stressful situations like university. That was kind of a shat example, but you kind of get the gist. So my next tip is actually kind of about an award that I think would be very beneficial for people to pursue. And that is the Duke of Edinburgh International Award and I have my gold certification. Um, you do a skill volunteering and like a physical activity for an hour a week um, for different time periods depending on if you're getting bronze, silver or gold award. And so for gold it was a total of three years. So yeah I just think that's kind of a great thing um, to talk about. I think when I was talking about it I may have like slid in like on this back tr backpacking trip that I was doing for my Gold Duke of Edinburgh award, like in the situation sentence. So yeah, it's kind of like a nice thing to have. And I think if you're able to, you should definitely pursue it. Okay, so now I'm going to hand it over to my friend who was in IB and kind of get some info about that. Yeah. I did the, I did the debate. That's okay, team. So lots of leadership, public, Public, yeah, yeah. Debate, if you have an opportunity to take a debate class, like, I, I feel like you should do it because when I was in 10th grade, I was like the most shy person ever and I didn't want to talk to anyone. And this class is probably my worst nightmare <laughs> because they would like pick on you and like, yeah, talk. but it ended up being really useful. And now, like, for all my interviews, for any sort of like job interviews and stuff like that. That is literally why I get jobs, is because I did debate. 
I'm sure that if, like, if you're doing IV, you're pretty much taking, you're taking, like, the same courses, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and it's just your basics, biochem, English, French, math, physics, social. And then that was in grade 11, and then in grade 12, it was, like, essentially the same thing, except I did calculus, which was a requirement. I also did music, which is, mm. I guess, band. I would, like, especially if you're doing IV and you're just doing the core subject and you're not taking any, like, French or, like, some language or, like, band or music or something like that, I feel like that's so sad, so hard when <laughs> you're doing it. A lot, a lot of people say that IV is, like, a cult because, like, everyone does the same stuff and everyone relates to everyone, but like the community that you build is super important and then when you get to university and everything's really hard and everyone has to do like a lot of work you're kind of already used to it because you've been doing like way more work than everyone else for so long and you're just like yeah. tired but now everyone's doing it <laughs> yeah so it kind of gives you a head up in that sense and it lets you know how it feels to be really really busy all the time which mm-hmm. is nice your personal profile did you find that you were successful in like talking about extracurriculars or did you also talk about something unrelated i i kind of i think i i i kind of put everything in there well not everything but just like i thought of in my head and i'm like okay so if like what do i want people to think about when they think about me Mm -hmm. and that's kind of how i answer that question is like okay i want people to know that i'm like I, like care about people and I'm really like, passionate about these topics and that type of thing I didn't really say on I, didn't, I don't think I mentioned academics really at all yeah me neither I think majorly I talked about um just like social justice stuff and like how I'm passionate about that and mm-hmm. that's like if I think in my head like one thing about me that is like most prominent that's what I would think of mm-hmm. I also find it helpful to like go around and asking people that I know, like what do you think about when you think, when you think of me and stuff like that. That helps me because it's hard. It's hard to think about yourself and be like, what is what is like what are the characteristics that are important about me? I think well, when you're applying to UBC, you get like the well, I got the option to I could either apply with my normal mm. grades okay. or my e grades, and I think it depends on the school because my school essentially just combined the classes and they gave me a normal grade and an IB grade and so I had the option to like skip some first year courses and things like that but I ended up taking most of them because I felt like I get I think it depends on the person really but I felt like the university courses at the end of the day there's still like there's more um, there's more material and there's, it's just like more in depth and I, I needed to take that course to be able to like take further courses. So yes, you have IB credits, it's really exciting to be able to skip things. And if you have English IB credits, I would recommend that you skip English first year. Yeah, skip but English and skip your elective, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you're like if you're like a science student, I would suggest that you take the sciences. It's, it's nice to like go into a course that you've kind of already covered the material for and it kind of like it lets your first year be a little bit like I don't want to like it kind of is good for your ego or self-esteem mm-hmm. because you've already learned some of the stuff so just retaking like not using your credits and taking the course I feel like it's beneficial anyway. So that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys have any more questions or want any more info that I didn't touch on in the video, please, please comment them down below. I love answering you guys' questions and I want to help out as much as I can. So I hope these tips helped you and good luck to everyone who is applying to UBC. I believe in you guys and you all do fantastic and just know the university that you get into is not the end of the world and every university or college is what you make of it.